I've already 100%ed Cuphead the Delicious last course, but it wasn't perfect. So I'm gonna restart Chalice's story and crush the residents of Inkwell Isle 4 until I've attained an S rank for each of them. We'll meet again, Chef Salt Baker. For now, give me the astral cookie and the shop is my first destination. I just now realized that these rocks are the giant's feet and legs. Anyways, on to the boss. The first phase of the Glumstone Giant isn't an issue for me. So let me explain how one gets an S rank. You need to beat the level within a certain amount of time, have at least three HP remaining, perform at least three non-mandatory parries, use at least six cards of the super meter, and win on expert. Back to the battle. And here is the part where I struggle. That bag of buttons that they toss around like a rubber ball combined with the chaos of gnomes popping up like daisies, make this section feel like it's impossible to do damage list. Once I'm below 3 HP, I gotta restart. The first round, they can throw whatever they want at me, because I know when to dash, jump, and parry what's coming. There's just something about the mayhem that doesn't fit my playstyle here. Just when I think I got it, a gnome sprouts out of nowhere. So what's the strat? Well, first I act like the baller I am during the first part, staying hitless, and gather up five power cards to trigger Chalice's super, the shield pal. This basically adds another heart to my kit. Top that off with Chalice already starting with four hit points, and now I can allow myself to be damaged twice rather than only once. Since the crack shot is my primary weapon of use, I like to camp underneath the puppets any chance I can get because if the bullet makes it uncracked, I'm getting more DPS out of it. Of course, gnomes will appear when I least expect them, breaking my heart shield. And feelings of being overwhelmed will cause me to stand in place just to be smacked by the ball, but a little more maneuvering after that brought an end to the puppet show, bringing us into the next act of being swallowed. Now, I knew once I made it here, the challenge was over. The amount of obstacles being thrown at me here are much more bearable than the ones before. All I have to do is jump over to another skull platform when a drumstick is flying towards me, hop over the gnome's dart, parry the pink ones, along with the cowbell ringing tongues, and the crack shot takes care of the aiming for me. You said you'd show me true Saiyan power. But all that you've got is pump up your little muscles. However, I was shocked to learn that my time card still showed white text, implying to me that I failed since the rest showed gold. <laughs> Oh, I didn't fail? Can anyone tell me how that works? Up next is the enemy, or should I say enemies, the moonshine mob. This one I find to be pretty straightforward. I like to dash through the bombs, setting them off before they become a potential problem later. Something you always need to keep an eye out for are the ant cops puffing out pesticide smoke. If it's pink, prioritize the parry. Then when the spider hauls a caterpillar, like a DVD screen player, it's good practice to extinguish so it doesn't bother you later. Like the bombs. As long as you take care of those obstacles and the henchmen, that occasionally fly in to say hi, you get some rather peaceful moments when laying on the damage against the arachnid. That's only the beginning of the recital though, as the light bug drops in with their gramophone. This part's the easiest. I just stand there shooting, then use the invincibility rolls when the sound rays change to a red color. There's also some pink barrels you can parry, but I don't classify those as guaranteed, which is why I mentioned to prioritize the earlier pink smokes. So yeah, a little more of that kills the maroon dressed lady. I was faking it. I find the anteater to be the most stressful member of this group to face. After some practice, I concocted a pretty consistent plan. That being hovering around the center, mainly shooting diagonally, which gives you enough room to sidestep the scuffle balls. When the snout shows itself on the bottom floor, I like to input one jump to see what it's up to. If it retracts itself, I continue with my routine. But if it stays, I double jump up to the nearest platform. Slug it out with the snail next, and that's victory. This ignorance is painful. What? Now the time matters? Those that commented earlier about this, I hope what you wrote is correct. To shave off a few seconds, during the second phase, I would switch my finger gun to the pea shooter in order to use the Mega Blast X attack. 1 minute and 46 seconds, that's more like it. Wow, Chalice sure is great, huh, Mugman? man? You said it, brother. What? Today's video is sponsored by U2s. U2s makes designer collectibles that capture the joy of the internet, creators, TV shows, video games, and more. They even collaborated with Cuphead. The unique designs really magnify each of their personalities, like Cuphead showing how goofy he is and Mugman second-guessing his decisions, or sipping his soul milk. I also like the SpongeBob ones that bring to life the memes we love. With hundreds of unique collectibles, you're bound to find something for you. They make for a great gift, but U2's releases are limited edition 
auction. That means once a U2 sells out, it's gone forever. So head over to U2's and grab the Cuphead collection today. Thanks, U2's. Now it's on to my least favorite boss. Well, at least when it comes to the main ones. I hate, 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 hate Esther. Like, what is wrong with me? I'm 30 years old and I can't pay attention to all this crap. There's the snake oil, a flying horse, a dynamite wielding vulture, and a cactus that gets lassoed. Honestly, it's this first phase that causes me to open up the menu to click retry the most. It's still not a free win by any means when I get to the second part, as you can see here with me restarting. But gosh, it's a breath of fresh air when I don't have to worry about all of this. Oh yeah, don't forget to parry for that S rank. Switching to the mini bombs when Ezra descends to the first floor of her saloon gives me more time to react to the rising debris. You may be thinking, how can you whine about all the first phase stuff when her second phase makes money rain all across the screen? To me, this is more of a controlled chaos, and you can see what's coming. The dropping safes are a little harder, but manageable if you shrink into the mini plane at the right times. I think the difficulty ramps back up a bit when she becomes a sausage link cow. Her obstacles here differ from the ones before because you can kind of tell what's coming. What makes this tough is you have to aim fire at Esther in order to progress. Positioning yourself to do so can put you in harm's way in the form of a stake if it's not pink or have nowhere else to go. Your agility is great in the mini plane, but you can't settle in it long if you want to fire down the cowgirl. The going gets better when she gets canned, spewing out two links of sausages, crossing each other up and down. In the past, I have struggled here. Now I just keep things simple, flying only in the top half of the screen. That way, I only have to deal with one sausage rope at a time. A bit more dodging later, and Esther's my next McDonald's order. They just keep lining up to die! Two minutes and six seconds. Not gold, but good enough for that S. Time to take the dogs to the pound. Quickly, too. I find the internet's opinion on this one so interesting, because the general opinion seems to agree that the canines are some of the most difficult of the DLC. But for me, they are by far the easiest. What you're watching now is my first attempt versus the Howling Aces, and I haven't even touched the DLC in over two months. But that's how much of a breeze these guys are for me. I only needed one try. It's so simple. Tennis balls coming down? Move left or right. Bone tattoos? Jump over the bottom one, but parry of pink. Fire hydrants? Shoot them down. Yarn? Duck. I just feel like everything comes at you so much slower in this level in comparison to the others. Even the letters from the puppies are being thrown at you like it's the first time you're learning about them in preschool. For the Chinook plane, you can dodge any of its laser formations with a jump and dash. And I mean any formation. Then for the Saluki, jump when the bulls are red and don't when they're yellow. Simple as that. That was almost too easy. <laughs> then again, it always is. Aside from this, only Jesus had done something so perfect on his first try. Unlike the Hounds, I actually had to get used to Mortimer's tactics. Then it clicked again to shift left or right depending on how the icicles were summoned. Then melt them with gunfire while in the crouching stance. Against the abominable snowman now turned refrigerator, I forgot how many spikes protrude in expert mode. Double jump dash inputs fix that problem. And whenever I see a pink popsicle, I seize fire until it's parried. Sometimes he doesn't deal out a pink card during the first phase, and the buckets in the and can be too risky to go for, but I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so I evaporate the snowman. Now what? Well, that begins the last of Mortimer's phases. With that comes more adjustments, like the ice cream cones closing in on you and the rapid fire of the eyeball's vertical beam, which fires five times during expert. While in regular, it's only three. Practice was all I really needed, though, to get my muscle memory back for what Mortimer had in store. Thankfully, the second time I reached his snowflake form, I had a shield pal by my side to make up for a mistake of mine. Then I patiently waited to dash past the eyeball, avoided all of the moon projectiles from the buckets, dashed past the eye again, and knockout. I am complete! I am the ultimate fighter! I have no equal! Two minutes and six seconds got me another S? That was the same as Esther's results. What really matters is only one big baddie remains. Wait, did I really get perfect scores for all of the bosses on aisle four? Can't forget about royalty, cause you know, he is the king of games. Technically, you don't get a rank after beating the king's champions. So I made up my own. No taking damage. Oh. Perry, 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 ah, nuts. Perry, 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 jump, Perry, jump, 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 ah. These are the easiest chess pieces. Why am I messing up? <sighs> All right, one more time. Perry, 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 jump. Parry, jump, jump, parry, parry, jump, double jump, some more jumping, parry, a lot more jumping, and parry! <laughs> 
remember back with Esther when I said she was my least favorite main boss to face? Yeah, here's the one I hate the most. Now, I'm not saying the night is the most difficult of the DLC. I'm just saying his playstyle aggravates me the most. It's all reactionary. You can't just dive in and attack. You must wait for him to make the first move. My general rule of thumb here is to only attack when he takes a fighting stance when his visor is still covering his eyes. You can pull off a few parries after he fails to slice you. When he does show his eyes before slashing his sword, I get the heck out of the way and don't even risk it until the upward strike is done. And is it just me or does this horse take forever to kill? What you're seeing now has been the same fight and I've even skipped over some and he's still not dead. How many more berries can he take? Cusco is dead, right? Tell me Cusco's dead. I need to hear these words. How do you need to hear all those words exactly? You still alive? <laughs> I won't bore you with showing the whole battle again. It suffices for me to say after over eight minutes of patience and perseverance, the night was broken without taking a single hit. The next two chess pieces don't give me any anxiety at all. The bishop's patterns are very easy to follow. First he glides side to side, going to each of the three predetermined heights. Then he acts like he's bouncing across the screen, except by way of floating. Keep that in mind along with the bells he spits out, and the bishop is ousted before you know it. Then there's the rook. Talk about a boring fight to watch. Jump and parry, jump and parry, jump and parry. <laughs> Make way for the queen! I'm gonna roast you even worse than how Twitter mocked Queen Elizabeth's death. Okay, you got me there. And there lies the problem, parrying while gemstones tumble down. Of course it's necessary to fire off the cannons and to disassemble the lion statues, but once she starts lobbing her jewelry, it's okay to wait it out before going ham with the cannonballs again. And that does it. Ding dong, the queen is dead. I mean, the queen is dethroned. Hark to my new champions, the remaining spoils. Today drained me. For everything Cuphead gets right, I do have one complaint. You can't replay some of the levels once beaten. This applies to the Devil Angel fight as well as the Mausoleums. I would love to replay those over and over again, but the only way to do that is by creating a new save file. Actually, there is. I just found out while voicing this. So as you can see, I am very much not used to this stage. Like the King's Leap bosses, I consider a perfect score for this to be hitless. It's somewhat straightforward once you get the hang of it. Only took about 30 minutes of practice. Here's how I did it. I would camp out in the left corner while I let the crack shot take care of business. Then I would roll through the fire spiral when it closed in on me. I slowly make my way to the other side and repeat the process. I did have to make sure to avoid the fireballs by means of jumping, and I didn't always have to retreat to the other corner after rolling. More often than not though, you're going to have to eventually. In previous attempts, I learned that turning around, which changed who was the devil and who was the angel, would almost certainly result in coming in contact with whatever change would occur on the screen. That's why you see me only changing the direction I'm facing, once I've made it to the other side. I also changed my super because shield power is useless for a damageless run. That extra firepower was just what I needed to win this. With a broken relic, now a cursed relic, I take care of some 100%ing housekeeping to make this a divine relic. Now only one thing stands in my way of 100%ing the DLC with perfect scores. Chef Saltbaker. You're up. What the heck? I've been hit. Let's try again. What is going on? I even tried restarting the game. This isn't even a mod. It's on my Nintendo Switch. I thought they fixed the bugs. Okay, so I guess it doesn't do that every time. Anyways, contrary to the angel and devil, I've played against the chef a lot. So the two fireballs and all the ingredients are no surprise to me. Still, I'm not perfect. However, I don't need to beat this hit list for the S rank. Just need three HP. So as I'm dodging whatever Salt Baker throws at me, I parry the pink sugar cubes every chance I I get to attain the shield pal to prepare for the next phase. Wow, that was dumb. Don't stand there during the transition next time, Andrew. Aside from that mistake, it's my belief that this part is more simple than the one before. I get up close to a pepper shaker to maximize crack shot damage, then once it flies at the chef, I aim upwards until it's time to make my way to the other side. I continue that rotation, even get back my shield pal, and move on to Salt Baker's next form.
Again, Andrew, what is with your placement decisions? And oh my, more glitches. Just the sight of them threw me off, losing my only spare hit point I had. And yep, I failed. Skip ahead a few minutes and we're back in the finale. This time with three HP and a heart shield. No placement problems either. The pasty white platforms are back and my hopping from one to another has improved. My first parry at the hearts gives me a full stack of five power cards. So I'm ready to resummon my health barrier if needed. Turns out my gameplay was excellent with precise platforming and well-executed parrying. Just a little more of that breaks the heart of Chef Saltbaker, giving me excellent marks across the board, resulting in my final S rank. Cuphead the delicious last course with perfect scores and 100%ed. Thank you to my patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs. You all have a good one. Thanks.